All right, so we're going to talk about some postulates and points, lines, and planes, etc. The first one I got to fill out for you is that in geometry, rules that are accepted without proof are called your postulates. And the rules that are proven are called theorems. I'm probably not going to test you on that, but I would like you to know there's a difference. So one of our postulates, just to get you to understand, is that through any two points, you can draw exactly one line. We just accept that as a fact. Okay, that's what a postulate is. If I had um, to prove that segment AB plus segment BC gives you segment AC, I already have some postulates that's a postulate also. Um, so that then you would be able to prove that B is between A and C. So there's things that are theorems that are proven. There's ways to prove theorems. That's about all I want to say about that. So on this page, I'm going to do some pictorials of what um, you see here. And later on, we'll add them in our um, ISN. So through any two points, there exists exactly one what? And I just said it. Line. Yep, one line. So if you drew points A and B, if I did a pictorial for what that would look like, so if you have two points A and B, then you can only draw one line through A and B. Oops, I missed. That's it. And another way, two points implies A line. That's the kind of stuff we'll put in our ISM. Partially 2.2 says through any three non collinear points there is a big word there and it needs to be that word to any three non-collinear must say non-collinear points there exists exactly one plane okay so if you have three points a b and c i just added a point into that picture then that means you're going to get and I'm doing if then statements because I want to relate it to kind of what your converse inverse stuff, those if then conditionals. If three points, then one plane. And I'll just put the A, the B, and the C in there. And then like in a little wordy thing, three points implies uh, they have to be Non collinear though. Three non collinear points implies one plane. Okay, do you still need this? Because I know I'm pretty fast. Okay. I need to go fast, but then I'm too slow for some of you, I know. So it's kind of I got a happy medium on occasion. I got to wait a minute. Just like, hey, get it down. Everybody okay now? But you got to stay with me, okay? Otherwise, I'm taking too long. Thank you. A line contains at least two points. Okay, so a uh, pictorial of that to get the difference between that and the first one. If you have a line M, then it has to have at least two points on it. I'll just make those points C and D. Okay, and then in a word, if a line, then at least two points. That's like an abbreviation for it. I just like making my little boxes or my clouds. <laughs> Okay, so this one sounds similar to one we already wrote. Um, it says a plane contains at least three non-collinear points. So it's like the converse of the one we had before. It would be you start off with a plane. Say that's plane P. So if you got a plane P, then it's got to have three non-collinear points in it. 
So maybe it was C, O, and G. Okay. And I don't care if we make, we don't have to do all these bubbles if you don't want to, but if we would be if a plane, then put three dots in it. Got to have at least three points, nine collinear points. All righty. Are we good? Or tell me if I need to hold off a second. Just wait a minute. I don't know. These kind of like the same thing. I don't know why I did it twice. They almost look like exactly the same thing. Okay, then 2.5 says, if two points lie in a plane, then the line containing them um, is also in the plane. Okay, now that's worded a little bit differently in our ISN. It's going to say, if two points lie in a plane, then the entire line is also in the plane. But that be, basically means the same thing. So. If you have a plane, say plane Q, I'll put the Q over here this time, and it's got two points A and B in there, then that means that the whole line that goes through A and B is also in the plane. Kind of seems obvious, but this time I got to make a line through there. And a way to kind of abbreviate that is if two points in plane, okay, line is in plane. And whatever you need to have done, you don't have to have every piece of this if it doesn't, you don't feel like you need it. Okay, special 2.6, it says, if two lines intersect, then their intersection is exactly one point. And that's going to look like just two lines crossing, make an X. And then an arrow and another X, like it. And I'm just going to show that their intersection is a dot right here. Um, you can't have, this is not possible right here. You can't have a line intersect another line twice. You can't do that. Okay, this can't happen. That's not a line. All right, agreed? Lines are straight, not curved. All right, so um, I could do if two lines intersect, INT for intersect, then it's one point. And I might need to wait a moment, I think. Yes. Are you that fast, Ariana? <laughs> Some of you are really fast if you're getting that down, because I think I write pretty fast, but maybe not because I'm changing colors and stuff. If two planes intersect, then their intersection is a, oh my gosh, I think I said that 30 times this year already. If two planes intersect, their intersection is a, thank you very much, a line. Okay, now this is going to be hard to draw. Okay, so I'm going to try this. Um. I think I won't do the whole fancy thing because then we'll have to draw the picture twice and it's already going to be hard enough to draw it once. All right, some of you might, will be good at this, some of you won't, and it's okay. Let's just try. So make a stick and then come up and make a parallelogram. So you're going to want to have opposite sides parallel. So I made this go the same way as that, and these are about the same length. Okay. Now I want you to draw a line like it, matching the top and bottom in the middle. Okay. 
that's going to be my line of intersection. So now I'm going to come out this way, oh, and this way. I'm just I'm doing it different than I did it earlier. Now that would work right there, but I think I want to make it come through. So I'm going to go continue that way. You got to go pretty far, and then come at this, and then you can stop and do a dash line behind it. Oh, that's not the best picture of it I've ever drawn. If you have, it would look better if I made this stand up a little higher. Okay, but the idea is that two planes intersect in a line and the line would be right there. I have another way to do it that might be easier for some of you to illustrate. Have, have you drawn a box before? Anybody make kings or anything before? Yeah, you could do that. that would, okay, I'm, I see a lot of hands for that. And here's how you can make a good uh, cube. Just make yourself a little rectangle or a square. Most kids probably learn to overlap them. You don't have to. Okay, you can draw the same, and this is easier for a lot of people to draw another one like it, just over to the right. Okay. So, and then just connect the corresponding corners. That helps you understand corresponding. That corner corresponds to that corner. This one corresponds to this one. You could dash this bottom one if you wanted to make look at see-through. Okay, you just got a nice big box now. And if you wanted to illustrate an intersection of two planes, you could do any of the edges, okay? And you could shade. Say you wanted to show the intersection of the front and the top. Um, that would be the line right here. Okay. If you want to do the right and the front, it could be here. Lots of lines that show the intersection of two planes in that picture. All right, that's enough of that. And now we're going to learn how to use these postulates, and that should be faster. Which postulate is shown? Now I'll let you go look at the list that you just had. This is showing a, two lines intersecting in a point. If two lines intersect, then one point. Can you tell me what postulate number that was? Yes, 2.6. I really, I got to stress you, um, I'm writing probably more, I know it's a lot of writing, but I'm writing down what I'm seeing because I want you to understand what the um, postulates say, not so much that I want you to memorize a number, okay? But I want you to be able to say what it says or look at the picture and say, what is it saying? So this one has got three points that are, what would you call those points? They are non-collinear, good. So this one is doing if three non-collinear points, then a plane, non-collinear. Okay, if you've got three non-collinear points, then you've got a plane. Now I want to find out what postulate said that. So I got to find the one that says something about the three non-collinear points, then a plane. Is it 2.2? And I think the other one was if a plane, then you've got at least three points. So 2.2 would fit this the best. And this one I think we just did really, really recently. This is saying if two planes intersect, let's do an abbreviation. If two planes I and T intersect, then a line. And that was postulate 2.7, I think. I always have to go back because I forget the numbers on them later. If I haven't just looked at them, I'm going to forget. So you can go, you'll have your ISN though, and you can look it up. 
but postulate 2.7. I really want you to know, though, how to write it, because on the quiz we're having next, actually, I moved it to Thursday. You're going to have some of these on it. Okay, we're going to make it go through 2.5. Um, when we do that quiz, this kind of question I'm going to write, I'm going to say, put it in words. Write it out in words which postulate is, not just write the postulate number. Ready to go? Do we need it? Okay. Now we're going to determine if something's always, sometimes, or never true. There is exactly one plane that contains points A, B, and C. What is wrong with this? It doesn't say that A, B, and C are what? It doesn't say if they're collinear or non-collinear. So since A, B, and C are collinear, if they were, then there's lots of planes. If they are non-collinear, then they are contained in one plane. So we would answer not always, but sometimes. I kids find these deciding if it's always, sometimes, or never difficult. If it could happen or could not happen, it's sometimes. If it all, can't be anything else, it's always, and if it can't ever happen, of course, it's never. Points E and F are contained in exactly one line. If you got two points, you always get a line. So this is just no way to do anything different. It's always. The first postulate states that there is exactly one line through any two points. Two lines intersect in two distinct points. <laughs> That's saying they do that. And what did I say about that? No. So this one would be a never. In the figure. Okay, I know you have to flip your page, so I'll wait a moment. In the figure, segment AC and segment DE are in plain Q. And line AC is parallel. Oh, this means parallel, in case you didn't know. So those segments are parallel, which means they never hit each other. That would mean these two don't touch. Okay, and then it says, state the postulate that can be used to show each statement is true. Exactly one plane contains points F, B, and E. F is here. So I'll highlight those. B is here and E is here. Are those collinear? No, great, that's a good thing. They're non-collinear points. So if you have three non-collinear points, if three non-collinear points, then you have a, then you get one plane. Okay, this then is true. We're trying to show it's true, and that's what the postulate says. And I forgot what number it is, so let's like, pick out which one it actually is. If you have three non-collinear points, then you get one plane. I think it's 2.2. That's exactly what it says. Okay, now it says line BE lies in plane Q. There's no line drawn there, but there's two points. So what I see is if two points in a plane, Because line B, E is in the plane. If two points in the plane, then line in plane. The whole line through them is in the plane. That was postulate, and I totally don't remember that one. Two, was it two five? I don't remember. I'll go back. Oh, there it is. If, no, nope, not two, oh yeah, if two points line the plane, then the whole line, two, five. I guess I've done it for three times today. I'm finally remembering. Postulate 2.5. So I prefer that you know what it says. If you write this, you're good. And if you tell me then it's postulate 2.5, that's great. All right, the intersection of line FG. Okay, FG is going through the plane. Oops. And line AC is on the plane. That's the yellow one. Where do they meet? At point B. That's true. There's one that says, if two lines intersect, 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 INT, then one point. 
what says if two lines intersect, there's one point. If two lines intersect, then there's one point. That would be this one right here. That's 2.6. Okay. Okay, that's what I saw. Anybody need this? Okay, next page. Oh, plane ABF and plane CDG. Do not think that you only connect those points. Just look what plane they're on. ABF is the back plane. CDG is this one in the front, which contains H as well. Okay, so plane intersect and line CD. Okay, if two planes intersect and their intersection is a line. If two planes intersect, INT, then you get a line. That one's 2.7? Okay. And which postulate allows us to say that the intersection of lines are a point? Oh my gosh, we just went through that one. It's 2.6, wasn't it? Two lines intersect, their intersection is a point. I mean, I don't need to rewrite what it says right there. So all you write is the postulate number. Use the diagram. Okay, we're going to do examples of postulates 2.4 and 2.7. Um, plane Q contains at least three nine collinear points. I don't know if it's Q or P. So I got to figure out where which one has three nine collinear points I can name. So I got to go over the picture. Um, on plane P, might help to highlight that to see it. I don't see three points, do you? I see an X and a Y, and P is not a point, and B is not a point, and neither is little a. So I'm gonna have to use plain Q. Contains at least three non-colonial points. They would be the points, what B? Yep, I'm gonna do those pink. B, W down here, and where else? Y, okay. Oh. V, W, and Y. And then the intersection between P and Q is a line. What line? We got to call it line B. You can't use a Y because it's only one letter. You got to use the word and then line B. Ooh, got quiet. Okay. Do we need this still? Determine whether we got always, sometimes, or never true. A line contains exactly one point. Can you have a line with one point? Okay, so what would we write out of the three choices? Yes, ma'am. Uh, not always. Oh, okay, it, it, it can't happen. Okay, so that would be a never. I know students are reluctant to use never sometimes. Oh, and I just said sometimes. Points uh, non-collinear. Oh, good. They put non-collinear. That means R, S, and T don't line up, are contained in one plane. Well, that's what one of the postulates says. So that'd be always true. That's what that implied. Okay, so it was exactly what it says in that. Any two lines L and M intersect. Do all lines have to run into each other? Okay, but could they run into each other? So if they could, but they don't have to, it's, yep, sometimes. Determine again, always, sometimes, never. Any two lines, oh, we already did that one. That was sometimes. I don't know why that's repeated on here. Points G and H are contained in plane M. If points G and H are contained in plane M, so it's saying if you have that, good luck. 
You're welcome. Then it's saying you've got a line in there. And there is a there's a postulate for that. So if that's the case, then this would be always. Okay, we're doing always, sometimes, or never. That's okay. You're right, it's true. R, S, and T intersect. Oh, planes intersect a point? If I have a ceiling and a wall, can I have one dot holding them together? Never. Can't happen. Now, this is just simply what's in your textbook uh, for the through any two points. There's exactly one line. These are just the postulates restated so I can refer to them quickly. We're going to this now. Your only page is going to be the very last page for homework. In this figure, line DG and DP are in the plane J, and H lies on line DG. That's a picture of that. State the postulates you can use to show each statement is true. D and P are collinear. I don't have to even look. D and P have to be collinear. They sure do because if two points, right? If you have two points, then you have a line, right? If two points, then you have a line. Aren't, aren't they collinear if they make a line? Okay. So this is going to be... Um, the postulate that says if you got two points, you get a line. Was it 2.1 or I can't remember? 2.1? 2, 2 points D, H, and B, P are coplanar. I don't even have to look. Any three points, we'll have to just make sure they're not in a straight line. So since D, H, and P are non collinear, three non collinear points will give you a plane. All right, which one says if you have three non-collinear points, you get one plane? Oh, that's not it. That's not it. Two, whoopsie. Yes, right there, 2.2. .2. See, in not every book it's 2.2, because .2, what if they do this in Chapter 3, then they do it 3.2. I mean, it's silly. Postulate 2.2 .2 says so in our book. Oh my, that picture for, uh, really gets to some people. So it might help to shade it a little bit, to shade there, and then down here, it'll look like one's cutting in through the other. Okay, it looks kind of like cards slicing through each other, right? That's how I just, that visualizes it for me. But I also have played with cards. Some people have not. Planes J and K intersect in a line. All right, that says that's saying that if two planes intersect, then you get a line. And that is postulate 2.7. And if you give me postulate numbers, um, if it's a question that says you can, then I'm going to be fine with that. I really want you to know what it says, though. If lines L and M intersect, oh, they intersect at point Q. All right, that's just if two lines intersect, then you get a point. All right, postulate 2.6. Okay, and that was that one right here. If two lines intersect, their intersection's a point. Finally, state the postulate again for these statements, points L and T and line M lie in the same plane. So that one's saying if two points in plane, then lines in the plane. Okay, so if two points and the line are in the plane, if two points in the plane, then the line's in the plane. I don't know, let's go back and look. Not the last two. Oh, it's 2.5. If two point plane a plane, then the whole line's in there. Postulate 2.5. And now this says 
points. Oh, let's just write it. We've done this one so many times. Two lines intersect at a point. That's two point six or seven. I think it's six. If two lines, that's one says if two lines intersect, then you get one point. Hope we're feeling okay about this. Oh no, more, always, sometimes, never. Three collinear points determine a plane. Uh-oh, there's a problem with the wording. It's supposed to say not collinear, but non-collinear. Therefore, this would be never. Okay, the reason being there are infinite set of planes passing through three collinear points. Two points A and B determine a line. Always, sometimes, or never. Always, because you can't draw anything but one line through two points. And a plane contains at least three lines. Well, we were told that a plane must contain at least three points that are non-collinear. So wait a minute. How many lines can you make going through them two at a time? Three lines. All right, I'll explain again. Just because it didn't say exactly that in the postulate, this is always true because it says it put two postulates together. Three non-collinear points determine a plane. And if your two points are in a plane, then the whole line's in the plane, and you can connect any two points and get three lines. So there has to be at least three lines in a plane. Determine whether, okay, another. Intersection of two planes contains at least two points. Do two points make a line? Yes, so this would be always. And if three planes have a point in common, then they have a whole line in common. This one is tricky. Okay, watch what I'm going to draw. I've got one plane, two planes, three planes. Where they meet is all, where's all three colors touch? Only there. Okay, so three planes can make one point in common, but they might go so that they have a, a whole line in common. So the answer is not always, it's sometimes. That was a tricky one, and I don't have that one on a quiz. I have just a couple more questions before you're getting, your assignment will be ready. We need to talk about this because I saw problems with understanding what this means on your quiz. I am probably not, I'm not going to have 1.4. This is from 1.4. Um, we're going to have on our quiz after this next one, I'm going to do 1.4 again. Questions on it because we've only had one attempt. This says, use the statement, if a ray bisects an angle, then it divides the angle into two congruent angles. All right. If a ray divides, we want to write the, this is from 1.4, and then now it's 1.3 because it's asking us to use this statement. And which of these is the inverse? Okay, so I got to get you something. Oh, wait, I said 2.3, not 1.3. It combines ideas from 1.4 and 2.3. Which choice is the inverse of the given statement? If a ray bisects an angle, then it divides the angle into two congruent angles, which is true. The inverse is when you negate not P, then not Q. The original statement is if P, then Q. So we want one that says if a ray does not bisect an angle, then it does not divide the angle into two congruent angles. Which one says that? The inverse, guys. We're looking for not. Okay. Guys, this is on Thursday's quiz. 
Do you know what this means right here? No. All right, your conditional statement is if P then Q. This is the hypothesis, this is the conclusion. Your converse switches the hypothesis and the conclusion. Your inverse negates the hypothesis and the conclusion. This is the converse, inverse does this, not P then not Q. Oopsie, I forgot the not sign. That little wavy thing. If you can get this down and know what I'm writing in symbols, you should be pretty good. Oop. Not P, then not Q. The contra positive is not Q, then not P. They asked me for the inverse. The original statement said, if a ray bisects, you're going to change it to not. If a ray doesn't bisect an angle, then it doesn't divide an angle into two congruent angles, and that is choice H. See it? Now it says which choice is the contrapositive of the given statement. It takes the original statement, it does what I just said, and then flops it. So it's going to be if an angle, if a, wait a minute, if an angle is not, wait, if not two congruent angles, then the ray does not bisect the angle. If a ray does not divide an angle into two congruent angles, then it does not bisect the angle. That one is J. You're going to have to do that multiple choice. That's on the quiz. You got to pick out which one. You have examples in your ISM. Did we fill those in? May we have, I think we did. Okay, this is number 20. Conjecture A is 6. Write a counterexample. So they're telling us that there's a, another answer that A could be. If you were solving this, you would divide by 2, and it would say A squared is 36. If you plug in 6, 6 squared does equal 36, but is there something else that you can square and get 36? Meaning, how many answers does this have? And it actually has two answers. It could have been, what's this? What's negative 6 times negative 6? So the answer is the counterexample is negative 6. You can square a positive and a negative and get a positive answer. And the difference between a theorem and a postulate is a theorem is proven. A postulate is accepted as fact. Postulate is not. <laughs> That's good enough. It is accepted as fact. That was the end of the ones I'm doing with you. You have a book page that has been printed out instead of giving you your eight and a half pound book to carry. <laughs> so it's just right there on paper. You've got notes attached with the postulates all on it. So I want you to do your homework. I did send out a mass email. I don't know whose parents are connected, but it talks about people not doing their assignments and that we have a quiz on Thursday and what's on the quiz. So, sorry if you already got one, but I'm going to start doing it morning when quizzes are, okay, and what's on them. Um, do your assignment and have a good evening. I'm going to close out now. Try to do a few of those problems right now.